Hello everyone, welcome back to Aussie Starcraft. We've been casting games from the uh, Dreamhack Winter that took place recently. This game is from the Group A stage of the tournament in the top right hand corner it is a liquid TLO. The bottom left hand corner is of course Alliance Naniwa. So these two competing best of three series as you can see from the uh, nice Dreamhack overlay we have at the bottom it is uh, it is actually game three. Both these players uh, have won all at this point so this is the decider. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with the Dreamhack tournament and uh, group stages in general players compete in best of three series in a sort of round robin format. The players that take the most victories from that series of round robin games progress into the winner's bracket. Those that uh, are unable to uh, get get that number of wins actually go into the lose, loser's bracket and continue to play. Now what's uh, not always standard is that uh, the winner's bracket and loser's bracket progress in fairly similar fashions and in the grand finals you actually have the winner of the loser's bracket versus the winner of the winner's bracket. So quite an interesting sort of format for a tournament and uh, we'll, we'll see uh, how Naniwa and TLO go in this game here. So is of course Derelict Watcher and uh, so it's going to be a ZVP. Naniwa obviously in, in great form, managed to make his way to BlizzCon, it was, uh, I think there was a lot of people who are excited to see that. Bit of an interesting player in the esports scene, uh, not, not as concerned about what everyone thinks, but just playing great StarCraft, Starcraft nonetheless. Tilo, of course, a big fan favourite, everyone knows and loves Tilo, or I think most people do anyway. It seems that pretty much everyone I talk to are big fans, so... Um, and pretty much every time we've polled the channel and asked what people want to see, if it's not TLO, then uh, it's not a Zerg player. So we'll see how these how these two go and uh, what what they rely what uh, strategy they decide to go with for the uh, deciding game here. Uh, TLO throwing his hatchery down now and uh, going to be hatch before pool. So derelict is a fairly large map. So bar some sort of strange proxy, you, you're fairly likely to be uh, quite safe in going uh, hatch before pool. Seems that Protoss players uh, haven't haven't been throwing down proxy pylons near as much in the in the game recently. It, it seems most players have decided that the resources invested into it uh, generally delay their own build order. So it seems that we've seen a steer away from that uh, traditional harass, I guess you could call it, from the Protoss and uh, a return to uh, tighter build orders. So, I see quite a lot of uh, neat timing attacks coming out of Protoss nowadays, particularly against the Zerg matchup. There's quite a lot of uh, Protoss timing attacks designed to hit before Mutalisks uh, really are available in sufficient numbers, because Protoss players that decide to uh, not go with the Stargate play tend to suffer once the Mutalist phase of the game commences and uh, get, get caught significantly on the back foot. So Protoss uh, in the current environment tend to be working to quite a lot of timing attacks des designed to either crush the Zerg entirely or at least uh, significantly delay the uh, production of those Mutalisks. So we'll see uh, what, what strategy Naniwa decides to go for here. But you see him throwing his pylon down the low ground, preparatory of course to uh, putting a nexus down there in due course. We can see that uh, Tilo was hovering a bit of gas there, but uh, sorry not a bit of gas, a bit of uh, minerals there, but both his queens now on the way. Naniwa has his warp gate and his stalker underway as well. First Overlord's going to see this pylon going to peel away. If we check out the uh, Stalker's Rally, is indeed going to try and pick off that Overlord, but looks like uh, Mr. Overlord might might be able to make it to safety off off the edge of the base just in time. Might might take a bit of damage from the Stalker, but uh, should be alright overall. Oh, anyway, going to get into the optimal position, try and try and get in as many attacks as he possibly can. But uh, the edge of the platform is, is eventually, I think, going to prove to be a little bit of a hindrance for this uh, poor Stalker. That is going to mean the Overlord has a, has a lot less health for any potential scouting runs that will come later on. Now we're actually going for his Mothership Corp. Well, quite, not quite quickly, but uh, uh, potentially a little bit faster than you usually see. 
but uh, most most Protoss, particularly Protoss that uh, are going going for the quicker expansions, tend tend to favour that mothership core around around this point in time, just just to hold off the early uh, roach aggression or mass uh, mass uh, zergling play that you can see out of uh, zerg players in the early game. That uh, photon overcharge really changed the dynamic in Heart of the Swarm for Protoss and made it a lot easier for them to expand it expand safely rather in the early game so Naniwa are actually doing a great job of spotting overlords with this uh, mothership core and actually gonna use this stalker to try and pick off this overlord a few zerglings gonna be scouting through here but there is actually a sentry and a probe in place to keep that door safe this stalker is gonna be able to quite easily pick off this overlord so it's going to be uh, one kill on that stalker definitely uh, bringing home the bacon so to speak they're going to continue patrolling, just trying to deny TLO as much vision as possible. And uh, really interested to see what tech choice Naniwa elects to go with. Currently he's just got a few gateways in his forge on the way. So, But we could could well see him throw down some tech behind this now that he knows that those overlords have been picked off. He knows he only has one to contend with. And then he, uh, can, he could potentially throw down some tech in this corner of his base and know that it's relatively safe from being scouted so let's see if he elects to do so plus one weapons now on the way and uh, the gas coming down the expansion is quite early for it well, uh, I'm torn between saying quite early and uh, regular timing for these gas but uh, getting the four gas this quickly it, May, it makes me want to say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to guess. Every time I guess for Naniwari, it just completely uh, blows us out of the water and does does something less predictable. It, and Naniwari has been known to favour favour the Stargate play, so we'll see if he le elects to go with that or if he goes to some sort of robotics and colossi play. I have the feeling I'm going to I'm going to lean towards Stargates. Naniwari has been a big fan of Stargates in the past, and they've they've certainly done good good things for him then. Right, still relatively few units on the field for Naniwa, just uh, macroing fairly solidly. We have uh, the next eye being chrono boosted to produce probes, so if we take a look at the income tab, TLO has a slight edge, but it's only a two harvester difference, which is, is quite important. Funny that uh, Naniwa is actually uh, mining more gas than TLO at this point, so and we do have 500 gas down, so let's see uh, what comes out. Actually a lot of gateways coming up now for Naniwa, so it's going to take us to six gateways. And uh, still a lot of gas though. What's that? Oh, Twilight Council, so it's an interesting choice. We have a lot of gas being being mined, but no, no immediate use for it. I'm wondering if we'll see a big sentry warp in or whether that will be saved for some, some form of Archon play. Indeed, I have three sentries coming in now, so it takes us to five. We, we could well see see quite a quick uh, gateway timing out of Naniwa here. So, surprised not to see a robo. It's quite, quite frequently players decide to go for the uh, sentry immortal all-in. Very popular in the, in the PVZ metagame. But uh, TLO himself grabbing a baneling nest which interesting choice versus Protoss certainly not something you see a whole lot of plus one plus one upgrades on the way for TLO and metabolic boost for his zerglings blink actually on the way for Naniwa so looks like we may actually see quite a lot of stalkers on the back of this so always an interesting choice whether he's doing that to go mass stalker or whether he's doing it to uh, potentially deal with those mutilists that come uh, pretty much a certainty in the PBZ matchup is that the Protoss player will have to deal with the Mutalist. If he's not going to do a timing attack to land before those six gas are underway for the Zerg player, then he knows that he's going to have to deal with the Mutalist. So whether he's uh, doing that blink ahead of time or whether he plans to use the blink, or this Zergling actually going to spot these uh, sentry moving out. It's possible that he could no, no, lots of stalkers on the way, so looks like TLO's going to have another look. He wants to know how many sentries. If you're wondering why he's suiciding the Zerglings, it's not suiciding, it's scanning. He wants to know how many sentries there are, how, how many force fields can potentially go down. There's a big group of Zerglings here in the middle of the map. 
So these uh, one zero stalkers now moving out across the right hand side of the map. Mothership core here is going to allow them to blink up and down onto the high and low ground. This front gate very secure. TLO knows there's no third base, but his own third base actually about to come under heavy fire here from the stalkers. Blink seconds away from finishing, plus two weapons about a minute away. Oh, the stalkers being caught on the low grounds, not certainly not ideal for Naniway. Of course, it's going to save some of those. Um, Naniway using a few extra pylons to wall in his gate. And stalkers here are going to find this third base very exposed. TLO is going to have to pull back his drones. Naniwa doing a great job of holding this off with these these couple of <laughs> couple of tickling sentries and uh, and a few uh, emergency pylons. Fortunately, these uh, zerglings are just going to find this wall is uh, fairly zergling tight. So uh, Naniwa doing a great job of defending this with relatively few units. Now has a proxy pylon established uh, perilously close to the zerg base. Lots of, lots of stalkers and sentries here. These Zerglings trying as hard as they can to get through. The forge does in fact go down, but a clutch force for it is going to keep the rest of these Zerglings out. These sentries are actually up to 5 and 8 kills respectively. That's about the most kills I've ever seen on a sentry. So those uh, those sentries doing a lot, lot of heavy lifting here. Tilo desperately trying to get his Zerglings through this gap in the wall, but uh, none of being able to hold on here. The, this stalk... Stalkers and sentries just potentially a devastating force here right at Tilo's front door. Workers here to try and uh, hold the hold the ramp. This oh nice time up there. Stalkers are gonna be able to pick that up. That mothership called perilously close to dying. Naniwa trying to make the decision as to whether or not he'll commit here. Deciding to mass recall as his own base has finally been broken by these Zerglings. Zerglings are gonna move up into the main. And uh, it looks like Naniwa took quite a bit of economic damage there, but still got quite a lot of forces here. So it, if he can if he can kill these Zerglings and counterattack, he should be in a fairly solid position to do damage to TLO. TLO still relying on these Zerglings to try and hold line. Though there are quite a few infestors here, so uh, is is certainly starting to tech up now. Whether these uh, stalkers can win their way through this many infestors and spine crawlers, I think, is is the big question. Certainly, these zerglings moving out will uh, find that the Protoss have their number. A lot of stalkers here now. Uh, oh, still one zero, so it looks like the forge dying did in fact cancel that two weapons upgrade. These uh, zerglings continue to scout around. We're, we're now up to 17 stalkers for Naniwa, so Naniwa just fairly committed to this uh, blink stalker play at this point. No actual tech follow up from this Twilight Council. We haven't seen any Templar tech come down beyond it. It looks like uh, Naniwa is very committed to the blink stalker play here. We'll see. It's, it's going to take some serious micro at this point to uh, try and carry the day. Moving out to try and harass this third base, but but TLO's main base is just incredibly well defended. All these in infestors and static defense just Gonna make a mess of mess of these stalkers, particularly if they try and engage along this line between the two bases. So uh, I think Naniwa's plans are, in fact, just to blink straight into the third base, and uh, up he goes. So blink now on cooldown as all these zerglings move in. Infestors here as well is going to be able to prevent a lot of these stalkers from falling back. You can see the, the fungal doing a great job of uh, holding these blink stalkers in place, but uh, blink actually actually managing to blink past that fungal, which is pretty impressive. The uh, force field keeping the stalkers alive for just long enough to to be able to get that blink off cooldown. So doing actually quite a lot of damage. If we check out the units lost tab, we can see that uh, it's almost dead even here. Actually, that volley from the stalkers virtually leveling up. So 4,000 resource lost each, but none of are able to make another big blink into the game. There is a lot less energy for fungals here now. So it's quite an interesting strategy from Naniwa using these force fields to protect the stalkers for long enough to get their blink off cooldown. We see these infestors being picked off now. Nice blink forward from those stalkers. If we can just pick off one or two more infestors. Seems like he's uh, passing on the infestors, but probably because he can see how low on energy they are. A few zerglings trickling in here, but I think I think Naniwa may actually have done it here. We see not not a lot of units on the way. We've got 26 more zerglings in an infestor, but. Many of these infestors being picked off here. Nice time warp here is going to make it very difficult for TLO to engage. Able to pick off those two two infestors and another big group of stalkers has has moved up to reinforce. There are actually up to 26 stalkers here now for 
didn't know anywhere and a few sentries to back it up. We have seven sentries in place here to help protect them from Zergling counterattacks. And Naniwa just picking such an such an interesting angle of attack and has managed to just wear his way through all the static defense in the world was uh, uh, caught out of position and he was able to take out that third base. So Naniwa doing a great job of uh, of uh, equalizing this game in spite of the fact that most of his own uh, income was cleaned up by that uh, Zergling push that TLO did. So just having a bit of a poke with a few stalkers, trying to see what's left at the top of this ramp. Trying to catch a few of these fungal, actually managing to blink out of the way of some of these fungal. There's just some great blink action out of uh, out of Naniwa here. You, you won't you won't seldom see a player fast enough to be able to blink once they see that projectile going. But that's twice that Naniwa's managed to do it in quick succession. I can't help but feel that's one of the main reasons he's been able to hold off, uh, well hold through and pull through in this game. So. We see uh, TLOA tap out of that game, and Alliance Naniwa is going to be victorious, which means Naniwa will take this series, and uh, th that won't be the end of the group stage for TLO. There's a few more rounds in it for him, but uh, Naniwa certainly off to a good start in this tournament. Just such impressive blink play out of him. I, I just I haven't seen that in, in Protoss play in such a long time, but when, once that uh, fungal turned into a projectile instead of an instantaneous casting, Obviously, Naniwa's cottoned onto the fact that uh, Fungal's just not going to hold up his stalk as near as uh, much as it used to. So, able to blink out of the way and conserve those stalker numbers and just uh, plough through to a victory. So, impressive work from Naniwa and uh, ni nice to see him in top form for DreamHack. So, hope you guys enjoyed this cast. We'll be casting a few more games. We might move on to the uh, Group B series and uh, cast a few games from there. We would like to cast something from everyone that participated in DreamHack. Of course, we'll cast the uh, finals and semi-finals in their entirety, but uh, in the meantime, we'll be casting us a few games from around the place. Make sure that we get a nice uh, kaleidoscope, if you will, of, of games from various players. Hope you guys are enjoying the casting. If there's any comments or feedback or whatnot, please let us know down below, and uh, we'll catch you in the next cast. Thanks for tuning in here at Aussie StarCraft.